Patrick, thank you so much for coming on to the Tennis Weekly Podcast. We are very excited to have you on because it means we can talk about the UTS Grand Final coming up in London at the Excel Arena in December. Now, for our listeners who don't know what UTS Ultimate Tennis Showdown is, in a nutshell, can you just can you just describe it for them? Absolutely. So UTS is tennis but showed in a completely different way much more modern if we let's put it like this if we had to create tennis today what would it look like knowing what we know about how people consume in today's world so it is basically 45 minutes matches um the time will decide the end of the matches it's not the score it's the time uh, we we count the points very simply like tie breaks it's um, it's uh, four times 8 minutes to be precise, and but there is time in between, of course. It's short, as you can hear it, but it's also very dynamic. There is no downtime. Interview at the player of the players at every changeover. There is a DJ during the match. Uh, in between every point, the players are uh, the coaches are able to coach their players during between every point. Uh, there, the cut of conduct is extremely light, so the players have much more room to express any kind of emotions. Uh, we want it to be really modern, exciting, um, like a great show where the players are able to show much more and be much more themselves. And the idea behind it is uh, to make uh, in four hours of time, inst- instead of seeing one and a half match, you can see four different matches, discover eight new eight players that you know already because it's only top players playing uh, and feel an, an incredibly exciting tennis that will also, and that's the goal, Please the new generation, because in today's world, the the fans of tennis are the same fans that we had in the 70s and the 80s and the young generation. OK, we'll go to the stadium, but don't follow tennis all year long. And that's what that's the goal of UTS, to bring those people to tennis. Yeah. And I think that's what's so interesting is that we've seen this season audiences and players they love they love attending it um what do you think is the one thing that you think is so compelling um that it it really engages and entertains uh crowds who are coming in their droves and also the players as well yeah so the the first uts we've done uh, were los angeles and frankfurt we were sold out in both of them so the crowd has loved it Uh, we have incredible feedback and the players too why Uh, because most of the players are young they're between, let's say, 20 and 20 and 30 years old. So it's a young audience. They are, they are representing a young audience. So they, they watch that type of content. They watch, uh, they're on social media. They watch the streaming platforms. So they watch TV shows rather than movies. They're used to also short formats, dynamic formats, authenticity, all these things that uh, tennis doesn't bring because it's, again, an old format. So they love it. And the fact that they're completely free it's something that they've said to me many times. We feel free to be completely ourselves. This is something they love also. Um, the prize money is great. I mean, there are only good reasons for them to to play UTS, and mm. they really enjoy. And we they, they ask to play again when they participate, which is a very good sign. And I've got to ask you about the. I think one of the things I love about UTS are the player nicknames. I feel like it's something the players love as well. Can you just give us an idea of? Where do those nicknames come from? Do they come from the players? Do they come from you? Uh, is it a bit of both? Is it their marketing team? Where where does it come from? Well, uh, I have a team who works on it, but my team works on it with the players, of course. We yep. will not give a nickname to someone, to a player who doesn't like it. <laughs> and sometimes the idea comes from the players. Uh, sometimes some players have nicknames since um, they're young and f- they either kept it and they want they want they want it to be their nickname, or they had nicknames and then it's not used anymore. But they remember their old nicknames and they like it and they want to put it back, or they, they have an idea. Uh, a lot of players have ideas actually about the nicknames they want. <laughs> I imagine there's quite a few that probably get discarded, and you're like, "That's the that's the good one. That's the good one." Um, I've got to ask. Um, you know, you've worked with you've worked with with a lot of players in in your time, and this season you've worked with. Coco Goff, I would love to know uh, what nickname would you give to Coco Goff? Wow. I mean, what stands out the most is her court coverage, how fast she is on the tennis court. I think 
she's the fastest of WTA by far on a tennis court. So something that has to to do with uh, who's so fast. <laughs> Like an Alex de Menor, like a speed speed merchant type 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 yeah. name. Is there maybe if there is a superhero who's crazy fast, that would be perfect for her. I'm <laughs> See, not I'm not, I'm the, not flash. A the flash. There oh, we go. The flash. <laughs> flash, but this is masculine. So we have to to uh, find a girly, a girly <laughs> for the flash. And and okay, then we have right. <laughs> I love it. I love it already. And there's another there's one other player I want to ask you what you think their nickname would be, and that is uh Iga Sviontek year end number one ranking in the books in in cancun what nickname would you give for igish fiontek if she played a uts event um to find her nickname i would think what do the players feel when they play her and i think i think the players feel that she's a machine <laughs> that there is no way it's like a, a machine that is impossible to to uh, to make it fail Mm. Uh, so a machine is not very positive we have to find a better way to say that <laughs> uh, that's literally the idea mm. like she's like she's going and you can't stop her you can't stop her maybe, i like maybe, it i like it stoppable, maybe, or something. <laughs> um i mean already for the the grand final we've got casper rude that's been announced andrew rublev's going to be there gail monfils um are there any other players you can give us a sneak peek on who will be there? I've heard some rumors that might be a local player playing for the uh, for the GB fans. Can you can you enlighten us? Yeah, of course. We have great news for you. We have Holger Rune, who's not a local player, but he's going to play. And we have a, a, a guy that you probably know called Draper. Oh, wow. So, yeah, he's going to play. And we're very excited to have him because uh, he's the future of... Uh, British tennis, but also uh, potentially the the future of men's tennis too. He has a huge potential. He's young. He has a very exciting game. He's uh, he's great. He's a guy that people love in in the UK, uh, and he'll be he'll be the local uh, superstar. So so that's a great news for us and for him too, I guess. Yeah, and and for the fans, we're very excited to see him. I feel like you just can't get enough uh, Jack Draper, and uh, yeah, he's going well in Sofia. I saw he beat Massetti, the top seed, the other day. So yeah, he's uh, seems to be in some good form. Um, you know your your background. You know you you're a you're a super coach. You know you coach Serena Williams. Um, you've coached lots and lots of top players. I'd love to, I'd love to hear from you. What's what's the one piece of advice you would give? Um, to aspiring uh, tennis players, maybe at a club level, what what would you, if you were in a room with them, what what would you say to them? Um, okay, I, uh, there is one thing that is key for me is the people that are around you, because you get, I mean, you you get advice every day. Uh, their mindset is going to impact yours. So I would I would give that advice. Uh, surround yourself with people who value you and who have a kind eye on you because if they are, if they don't have that, they're going to criticize you all day, uh, every day. And I, we see that a lot and this is going to affect you on the person as a person uh, and, and your confidence, uh, yeah. and it's key for the future. So, uh, I think that's, that's extremely important. Uh, I know, I know it's in the cliches that, a coach has to criticize. No, a coach has to value the people, value them, see what's great in them, and help them develop strength and their confidence. So the people that are around you are the key for your success. Mm -hmm. It is very important. Of course, when I say that I'm a tennis coach, I I play for myself, but it's true. It's yeah. very true. We've seen that a lot of times. And I've got two final questions for you. Um, they're both related um, to you know, what's going on at the moment on the tour. Um, What's the one thing you would like to see change um, on the ATP and WTA tours in the future? I'm sure you probably got lots and lots of things um, going on in, in your head. But if there was one thing you would like to see change, what would it be? I mean, if I had one thing, it would be the coaching, of course. Uh, it's the only sport that is still resisting to coaching. So slowly coaching comes in a bit more during the matches. But I mean, it's so exciting to see, uh, to hear a coach uh, talk to his player, to hear an interaction. Mm. Because the player also talks to the coach. It's so interesting in terms of understanding what it is about the performance. Uh, I think for the fans, it's it's incredible, and I think uh, also it helps us discover the players better because when they express themselves in moments of 
of emotion, you you get to know them better. So in all the other sports, coaching moments are sometimes the best moments of the of the matches. So and it's and it's our job. Our job is to coach the players, and of course before the matches, but also during the matches. So we've 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 went a long way. It's 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 much better now. Now we're allowed to coach, but I would make it like something really. Uh, important. I mm. would mic up the, the coaches. I would leave them on the court, and and I would like to hear all those interactions. We are making the show so much more exciting. And final, final question. This is just. Uh, I need two names from you. Who are your year end number one singles ranking players on the ATP and WTA tours at the end of next season? I want two names. One on the ATP tour and one on the WTA tour. But well, end of 2024. Huh? Yes. Um I know it's a very tough question, but it's it's one we ask it's one we're okay. asking our guests at the moment. Uh, I'm really curious to see who you're gonna say. Uh Novak Djokovic, because I think he's gonna dominate uh, next year again. And uh Coco Golf. Oh, okay. Interesting. Like it. I like it. Well, thank you so much, Patrick, for taking the time once again to come on to the Tennis Weekly podcast. Um, it was an absolute pleasure. We're really, really excited to uh, to get down in person to see UTS at the grand final in London at the Excel Arena in mid-December. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, thanks again once more for coming on to the show. Thank you very much for the invitation. See you very soon in London.